Thank you very much, as was <laughs> introduced. My name is Masumi Owa, and uh, for nearly seven years, I worked for uh, mainly Japanese government, two, two years in Tokyo, three years in Uganda, and two years in uh, Japanese delegation to OECD DAC. And today's pre presentation uh, is based on my PhD research uh, that I have just submitted for the thesis that I have submitted to University of Warwick. But not exactly what I was doing as a thesis because um, I, for my uh, PhD thesis, I interviewed nearly 90 informants from OECD secretariat, OECD DAC secretariat, and delegates. And because I compared Japan and UK as in terms of how they interact in the OECD DAC, I interviewed uh, with government officials, NGOs, academics, both based in UK and Japan, including Howard White. So um, today's presentation is uh, one, of, one of the probably not major findings, but kind of minor findings that I was personally very surprised when I, I was interviewing with these people that when I, when I asked them, they said, well, OECD DAC policy or Paris Declaration Aid Effectiveness Agenda is not really based on evidence. And they say, rather than based on evidence, it's more like um, collecting evidence based on what they have in their mind as policy. So this is um, to kind of share with you what I was surprised in uh, when I was interviewing and offering their perceptions, interviewees' perceptions uh, among the members and secretariat of the OECD DAC about evidence-based policy, especially on aid effectiveness agenda. And also, I would like to identify three reasons for this gap uh, in terms of what OECD says, evidence-based policy, and the gap between that and the people's perception about that and for further discussion in the last slide. So um, OECD, uh, as you probably uh, knows, is uh, one of the international organizations headquarters based in Paris. And Development Assistance Committee is one of the 240 committees in the OECD. And OECD itself says on their website, as, a, as their core value, our analysis and recommendations are independent and evidence-based. So OECD offers, um, offers um, evidence-based policy to government officials. But as I said, uh, people's perception is more like policy-based evidence-making or policy-oriented evidence-gathering rather than evidence-based policy. Also, uh, the third point uh, is that when I was interviewing them, they said, um, like, for example, like uh, secretariat officials or members delegates, they said before they worked for or worked within the OECD DAC, their thinking was OECD DAC is more like a research organization, a research think tank. But after they uh, joined in working for the OECD DAC, their perception has changed because they now think it is not really, the DAC policy is not really purely based on research or DAC's research function is not as strong as they thought. So aid effectiveness ag agenda. As I said, uh, DAC is one of the 250 committees in OECD. And as most of you probably know, 
that DAC led the high-level forum on aid effectiveness in Rome in 2003, Paris in 2005, Accra in 2008, and Busan in 2011. But among these, Paris in 2005 was the most uh, largest, or well, not, not large, is it? Now, not largest, but uh, Paris Declaration on Aid Effectiveness was agreed among uh, more than 100 countries and organizations. So, as I will be explaining later, it is regarded as one of the most important high level forum among these. And next point I would just like to mention is there's, apart from this OECD DAC, a defectiveness thing, um, there are also uh, a lot of academic research that have been conducted. And most of them originated from like 1980s. There has been a lot of research on whether aid contributes to economic growth or not, including Howard White's contribution to that. And I would say these academic research looks at ex or examines whether aid works in terms of um, increasing the economic, um, economic development. But the other lines of research more looks at why aid has been e ineffectiveness. For example, in during mid-1990s, 1994, 1995, there was a, a research conducted by Robert Cusson, and his research is, was more like looking at the fragmentation of donors' aid and looking at how donors can coordinate. Also, there was a research done by, study done by um, Helena, Geli Helena, uh, who does, who found that in Tanzania more than 2,000 project aid were um, conducted from various kind of donors. So what they said is because of these, um, recipient government has less capacity and they are uh, overwhelmed by the donors' aid. So I would like to kind of distinguish between among the academic research, these um, works looking at whether aid works or not and why aid has been effective. effective. And OECD DAC is responding to the latter part of the research, why aid has been effectiveness. And they are trying to uh, seek for how aid can be effectiveness through their work on aid effectiveness agenda. I understand that there are some studies done by uh, the origin of the aid effectiveness agenda, how they uh, began and how they evolved uh, within international organizations and research uh, community. But I just would like to mention that uh, Aid Effectiveness Agenda, originally around late 1990s, early 2000s, uh, was quite often discussed in a forum called Strategic Partnership Africa, where government officials from African countries and donors met more uh, in an informal way and discussed about the problems that they are encountering. And DAC, uh, in the beginning of 2000s, they took initiative to host this aid victim agenda, especially from 2000, when uh, within the DAC, there are many working parties, statistics, uh, gender, fragile state, different kinds of area 
But in 2000, they created, newly created the working party for aid effectiveness so that they can uh, host the international discussion on aid effectiveness agenda. And as I said, in 2005, Paris Declaration on Aid Effectiveness was agreed among more than 100 countries and organizations. And the Paris Declaration set out five principles and 12 indicators. I just want to mention uh, as an example why people think that uh, aid effectiveness agenda is not evidence-based. Um, if you look at this uh, table down there, I, I, th I hope you can. Um, the first column says principle, ownership. So recipient countries need to take ownership and they set out indicators and the indicator says opera operational development strategies. Percentage of countries having a national development strategy. And baseline, they did baseline survey in 2005, only 17% uh, government, government had the operational development start strategy. But 2008, 2010 survey shows that gradually increasing. But in 2005, they set the target that after five years, they're going to uh, achieve the 75% uh, of the target. Now looking at these, this is, um, this is Paris Declaration. And I just like to make three uh, points on this. So when I was interviewing, one of the DAC delegates said, when she arrived in Paris to work for the OECD DAC, she didn't know why the target was set as 75%. So she was trying to check the past documents and try to ask the secretariat, but nobody, nobody uh, gave her answer why it was 75% rather than 100%. So um, she was very sus suspicious that past aggression agenda um, is really based on evidence and how it was um, formulated, how it was decided. Also, second point is, when you look at ownership of the receiving governments, we, we can't just uh, say that, okay, if you have the operational development strategies, you're going to have ownership. But this is very, very technocratic, technocratic narrow-minded idea. And uh, actually, uh, some papers have been uh, published on this point. And in Accra High Level Forum in 2008, they included more, um, not only for the government ownership, but for civil society ownership as well. So the definition of ownership. Then, and the third point is um, people involved in uh, monitoring and evaluation of the Paris Declaration are quite uh, suspicious about uh, as I said, how, how they were defined and how they were decided. Members have different priorities and ideas. And also the process is between secretariat and the uh, government de uh, development partner countries have been also very political. So I would like to just suggest three reasons for this gap between what OECD says as evidence-based and what people think as um, not evidence-based. And reason one is inherited in OECD DAC structure because OECD has no country office in developing countries and they are not collecting data from developing countries Compared to like World Bank or United Nations, they have offices in um, country partner countries, but OECD doesn't. So OECD DAC itself lacks the stati statistical based evidence. Rather than collecting data from developing countries, what they, what they do is collecting data from donor 
countries because their major aim is to change donors' behavior, change donors' policy. So that's what they used to do, what they are you doing now. But when you look at evidence-based policy, then it's going to be different. This is just to show how that is peculiar to other OECD committees. As I said, OECD has 240 committees. Uh, for example, they do uh, education policy, health policy, as you probably know. But these other committees collect data, starting, okay, starting from here. OECD prepares the brief agenda and so on. And between uh, secretariat and member governments, they agree certain policies, and member implement in their own country, in their own uh, community. And the data will be collected within their own countries so that this can be monitored and feed it back into the OECD policy. But if you look at that, the structure is uh, quite different because that policy, until this part is the same, is prepared between the o that secretary and the mem uh, members, countries, that secretary agree certain policies but member try to internalize these policies, but in, to implement, in terms of implementation, it will go to recipient or partner countries. So because of this difference, currently, or in the past, that has been trying to collect data within the donor countries in terms of what they do as a donor. But in terms of collecting data from recipient partner countries, this is the deficiency that the DAC has. <coughs> and also, it's also rela related to the Paris Declaration Aid of Economic Agenda. Second reason is that I would like to say different kinds and levels of evidence, if you say evidence. When I ask people, is OECD DAC policy evidence-based? They say it depends on the definition. It, de it depends on the how regu rigorous it is. So um, that evidence, people say, is not rigorous, but anecdotal evidence. By bringing out lessons, collecting materials based on already published research in order to form consensus among the members. And some says evidence for greater common denominator is actually necessary rather than rigor rigorous, rigorous evidence-based policy. And pure academic research may not be useful in forming international agreement. Reason three, policy making is a political process. Secretariats want to show the evidence because they want to say this is this is um, neutral perspective. This is not what we want to do. This is not our initiative. But based on evidence, we we would suggest this. So evidence is seen as neutral, but pol policy making process is a political process involving various kind of actors. And secretariat, secretariat also has their own incentives and motivations as well. And finally, I would just to um, propose some further discussions from the presentation today. So first point is understanding of evidence can be different and diverse among the people involved. But can we have pure evidence to formulate policy? These are two quotes from the DAC Secretariat. It's messy, complex, and iterative, and evidence come in different places. Because the world is complicated, you need a lot of evidence cutting across all the issues to get the whole picture. And one of the secretaries told me, members want the evidence, members want to see the evidence, but providing pure 100% neutral evidence is quite challenging for them. And third point, evidence-based policy making 
can be more complex in international organization. When you look at bilateral donor or just evidence-based policy making in one country, things are more probably simple compared to policy making in international organization where more different interest people, different mo motivated people, member staff and also secretariat staff, where these people are involved, um, it will be more difficult and complex to form um, policy. And third point is, then what is the role of international organizations? And this is one quote from uh, Japanese government officials. DAC knows the history of development cooperation and they seem to know the direction. And even they said that even though there may not be uh, evidence that they want, but DAC knows uh, the history of development cooperation. They understand the direction that we need to go. So that kind of um, policy may be able to be provided by international organization. Well, sorry, the last point just, I will just skip. Thank you very much.